President Trump doubling down on his tough talk on trade, warning against retaliation from the European Union. The president tweeted this threat over the weekend. If the EU wants to further increase their already massive tariffs and barriers on the U.S. companies doing business there, we will simply apply a tax on their cars, which freely pour into the United States. They make it impossible for our cars and more to sell their big trade imbalance. Here's what Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross told me yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures about that when uh, I brought up potential retaliation from abroad. I think what the president was saying was that because we have a big deficit and the other sides have big gains from trade, they have much more to lose in a trade war than we do. I don't think the retaliation is likely to be on steel as such. I think if it is on anything, it'll be some little product in a key state to try to get uh, Mitch McConnell or Paul Ryan feeling some pressure. John Hilsenrath, uh, obviously this was the big debate story on Friday, yeah. continued over the weekend with EU coming out and saying, we're going to put uh, tariffs of our own in and, place. And your interview with Wilbur Ross was, was really interesting because he's effectively arguing, everybody calm down, this isn't a big deal, it's just right. $9 billion in tariffs from us, $3 billion in tariffs from the EU on things like Harley-Davidson motor motorcycles, nothing's going to hurt. But but the, the president is saying this is a big deal. He's saying this is going to change the tide of trade for, for the whole world and America is going to finally start winning. So there's some disconnect between what the Commerce Secretary is saying and what the president is saying. Mm -hmm. You know, what really matters is what happens with prices. There's a lot of talk about these being small in amounts, but are our, are our bills going to go up for cars and washing machines and beer cans? And, and, and we discussed this on Friday, uh, Dagan, after that uh, journal op-ed where, where they titled it Trump's Tariff Folly. Wilbur Ross basically said these are very insignificant price increases. You know, we talked about the idea of a, a case of beer. <laughs> it's not one case of beer that's being consumed a year. Uh, but even he said cars are not seeing the kind of significant moves that the journal has worried about. I think it's, and I tweeted this on Friday, I think that's actually a ruse. And really? it's a distraction away from the, the potentially incredibly destructive impact of tariffs on aluminum and steel because it's not just about raising prices. And by the way, this could jeopardize way many more jobs than it would ever save. But it's about the retaliation from nations with, uh, with whom we, we trade. And again, they're slap, planning to slap these tariffs on nations that are our allies mm. that we need in terms of our national security. And I'll, I'll point out just a couple of things because they were, um, Secretary Ross and also Peter Navarro were on TV all weekend as well, and they said this is a drop in the bucket compared to the overall size of our economy. It's nine billion dollars. You know, it's only nine billion dollars in total tariff value. Well, do the math on that. That is essentially paying five to six million dollars per steel job saved. How does that math work out? And I think to, to the White House, when you have Larry Kudlow, Art Laffer, and Stephen Moore, critical economic advisors yeah. to this president's pro-growth agenda, coming out in the Hill over the weekend and writing a tariff telling him, what a bad idea this is. I, I mean, this well, is that, a sh they, this is they, they, not, not, not only them, but it's interesting who we didn't see this weekend talking about the tariffs. We didn't see Gary Cohn, his top economic he, he's advisor upset in the about White this, House. Yeah. And we didn't see Steve Mnuchin talking about it and defending it. And so. also, Secretary of Defense James Mattis is up. Uh, there have been reports that he's very upset about this because, again, you're slapping a tariff on South Korean steel. Right. And you know, we they, need. So, again, it, it's, just, it's more than just, oh, your six pack of beer is going to go up and your can of soup is going up. And, and I'll argue that was, in terms of messaging, that was, I don't know who orchestrated that, but that did not look good last was the week. Messaging, really. Look, the messaging was really tough, I think, especially for the those people who are really, really familiar with the issues. That said, I think a lot of Americans out there in, in, in the states that, that voted for him, like Wisconsin, Ohio, Pennsylvania, hear this story about trade and they're excited about it. They hear, you know, that they we're saving jobs, that we're going to make things fair again, that we're making things right again. So I don't know why people are so surprised that the president is doing it because he promised that he was going to do it. Mm. My big question really is, 
Is this another one of the president's negotiating strate strategies, which is let's throw something out there, create a lot of chaos, a lot of conversation, and then it gets rolled and way to, back? To that end, there was a headline yesterday, and I didn't, I couldn't find anything more on it, but basically saying that China is going to be cutting import tariffs for vehicles as well as some consumer goods. I'm wondering if th this is already stoking changes coming out of China just because of his negotiating stance. Well, we can't rule that out, that this is, uh, this is playing poker. We, we, we also had uh, President Xi's uh, top economic advisor in Washington last week trying to talk uh, the president in the White House back from taking steps like this. So this certainly has gotten the Ch the, the attention of the Chinese. Right. They have the most to lose in a, in a case and, like this. And do you think they're cutting import tariffs on vehicles and consumer goods as a result of this? I don't we don't know. know. We don't know anything don't know more it's, about it's this. It could be for everybody but, it, but the United States. So mm. let's wait. <laughs> let's wait and, and see. And to, to underline that point, Navarro and Wilbur Ross on my show were very clear to say there won't be any exemptions because there was a feeling that maybe there would be some countries that would actually be exempt from well, so some of this. This is one of the challenges of this whole deal right. is that we, we don't import a lot directly from China anymore because we have imposed duties on specifically on Chinese imports. So we get most of our steel from China. Yeah. So. You know, I'm sorry, from Canada. So are we going to actually be hitting the culprit in this global steel glut by by doing this? Well, A lot we're, of we're our hurting. allies in Europe say no, that it's just going to hurt them. We're right. hurting our greatest economic ally in Canada if you're doing these as broad-based tariffs. But in the in And the, those NAFTA talks are continuing right now. There's the, another round going on in Mexico and the, City the right Europeans now. Europeans who say that the steel that isn't going to get dumped in the U.S. is instead going to get dumped on, on them. So they've been fighting really hard to get us to, to work with them to do something uh, to team up on China. And yeah. as Kudlow, Laffer, and Moore write, Trump should examine the historical record on tariffs because they have almost never worked as intended. Yeah. And they go through Smoot-Hawley tariff of 1929 that drove us deep into the Great Depression. Well, the look, look, import, wait, let me finish, the stagflation in the 70s because of the import surcharge that was put on by Richard Nixon. George Bush, huh. again, destroyed more jobs with his 2002 steel tariff than actually existed in the steel industry at that time. And by the way, Lee, you talked about Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania. That's where those were the states during the 2002 steel tariff that were the hardest hit by the job losses mm -hmm. in well, other industries, not not steel, but in the industries that use steel. And the thing we have to remember about those two tariffs as they might relate today. The president, President Bush reversed them a year later. Well, you, yeah. you mentioned that's a good point. You mentioned China, the country's 2018 economic growth target now set at six and a half percent. Compare that to what's happening here, about three percent. That is down from the country's growth rate of 6.9 percent last year, but six and a half percent is a serious <laughs> number, John. So, so what that means, so it's, it's March of 2018. What that means, here's a prediction I can make for a headline. In December of this year or January, we'll see the Chinese will say that their growth was 6.7 percent. So, you know, they, you they're go. the only country in the world. They say this is what our growth is going to be, and that's the number that, <laughs> exactly we, end up, what it that is. we end up getting. Yeah. It's partly because they fake the numbers, but it's also partly because they'll do anything to reach their targets. And you make a lot of mistakes when you set a target and will pull out all the stops to achieve that target. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're, they're piling up a lot of debt right now to keep that economy growing as fast as it is.